I was on the island of Nui, and my friends had taken me here to a place called Falguha Fakatufono, uh, which is basically the customs office. Time to sign out. Always a bit suspicious having a water tap next to the toilet, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't drink that stuff. Nice with a tap on it. <laughs> Just across from the customs offices was a supermarket. Time to stock up with some essentials and get myself a new hat. Something to remind me of this beautiful, beautiful island. Luckily for me, I'd caught the last of the good weather. It was time to pack my show up, uh, get the top of Hopper Hatsu off the dinghy, uh, get the dinghy on deck and everything tied down ready for sea. With the outboard being such a heavy one, getting the thing off the dinghy and mounting it on the back of the boat is quite a strenuous job. There's always an awful lot of work to do before you can up anchor. Here I am securing the dinghy to the front of the boat. You can see the lashings there with the safety lines running down the center of the boat over the top of the lashings. One of the things I didn't have to do, however, was to pull the anchor up because it wasn't down. I was on a mooring, so all I had to do was slip the ropes and we were free. Shaddy is not behaving herself. Sails keep backing. Uh, there's only a puff of wind coming from this side of the island. So I'm going out to catch the wind before she'll sail properly. So I'm under sail. But she keeps messing me around. Sails are backed again. Um, a, a sad goodbye again uh, to a beautiful little island, uh, which is Nui. I had uh, two uh, days ashore there. Um, some bad weather that stopped me doing more things as usual, but no, I tell you what, all, pos all positive, brilliant place, absolutely brilliant. Uh, loved it to bits. I made some new friends there, um, including this guy. I don't think he'll mind. I won't say his name just in case he does mind. He's 78 years old and he's doing what I'm doing, yeah? Uh, he looks, he's got more hair than me as well. Um, he, a nice guy. I hope we meet up with him again later, have a few beers and a few other friends as well. So that's all good. But leave it Nui and we're on to uh, the Kingdom of Tonga. Yeah, the Kingdom of Tonga. It's a monarchy. Um, and it's gonna hopefully take me, um, well I thought I'd do it in three days, but with, with this win, it's gonna be another long haul. I can, see, I can see it coming, I don't know. So somewhere between four and seven days, let's say that. All right, so we're on our way under gray skies. And it's getting cold at nights these days. We're going south, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go west at the moment, then, then we're gonna be heading south big style. Bye bye, Nui. I was talking with some friends the other day about uh, having seen a green flash the famous green flash that sometimes occurs 
uh, when the sun goes down and uh, I was just sitting on the deck here tonight and this looks like a green flash kind of uh, situation it only occurs under certain conditions apparently I, I always thought it was a figment of people's imaginations but no I've seen it so this is it's actually when the sun goes down just as it gets to the horizon but the problem is the horizon tonight is just it's not quite clear because there's a bit of waves going and there's also a bit of cloud uh, on the uh, sea and the rigging is in the way so everything's against us here but we we might uh, we might get it as I said the horizon is um all over the place I'm, I'm trying to hold the camera still it's really difficult the boat is really moving about you can see the rigging and everything uh, it's gonna be now is it gonna go is it happen gonna happen it happens it just as the crest disappears it's gonna happen no I don't think so no no green flash <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was gonna do it tonight I don't know no, okay, well, meantime, we're, we're still on our way to Tonga. Uh, we're wing on wing. I haven't really filmed much because there's not much happening. It's been uneventful, which is good. Uh, what has happened is I, and another rip has appeared in my mainsail, so that's down. I'm going to try and repair it tomorrow, but uh, we're, we're sort of uh, bouncing all over the place. It's not ideal for sort of working on the deck at the moment. Um, but yeah, a nice evening. We have been doing some brilliant speeds up to uh, seven knots, um, but at the moment the wind is not much more than a breeze, so we're only doing about uh, three at the moment. Been playing the guitar, uh, working on some songs uh, for a new album, but that's uh, news to come later on. Uh, eating some olives and drinking a beer. I think it's time to go inside. This big boy back here looks like it's about to spill all over me. Oh dear. Okay, um, we're about three or four days into the trip across the Tonga. I love old school. This is an old tin I inherited from my mother. It now has all my sewing gear in. It was time to get that out again and repair the mainsail again. It was now getting so rotten, I was worried that uh, it wouldn't last all the way onto uh, the next part of the trip. Even though the swell wasn't too bad, I had to wedge myself in. One hand for the boat, as they say, or in this case, a leg, uh, to support myself while I worked. It's another lesson of self-sufficiency at sea. There's no one else there to help you. If you don't know how to sew, you have to learn. Make sure you've got all the stuff with you because uh, when something like this happens, uh, it's cool because I can fix it. But if I didn't have the ability to fix this mainsail, then I'd have a big problem. And uh, also carry some of this stuff with you under different trade names throughout the world. But uh, yeah, this uh, Grilla tape, gaffer tape, uh, duct tape, whatever you call it, good stuff. And yet another day. This day is beautiful. It is absolutely perfect sailing weather. I've got the sails fore and aft on the boat. Uh, we're trucking along at about four knots. Uh, we were becalmed most of the last night, so it's nice to actually be moving. Don't know if you can really see it, but there's a few birds out there. Uh, something going on, somebody's feeding, and the birds are getting food off them. Still keeping a lookout for whales. I didn't see that, but I did see a big ass Dorado uh, in the sea. He was swimming next to the boat. Huge he was. Of course, by the time I ran down below to get the uh, camera, he'd gone. I mean, he was far too big to catch. You would have fed an army uh, for a week. He was, he was a big fella. I do love it like this. Unfortunately, days like this, what you would call perfect sailing days, don't come around that often. Had the Genoa on the high side uh, on the pole for the last three days. Today, the wind has changed slightly and I'd come too far north on my course. So time to uh, put the fore and aft sails up. 
I got them situated like that, but I had to wait a little while this morning before I could do so. Couldn't get the mainsail up straight away this morning, had to get the needle and thread out and fix some more holes, uh, which were right at the top up there. I don't know if you can see it, I've got uh, tape over some of them now. Uh, this mainsail has just about had its last sail. It's got to last me to New Zealand, another one and a half thousand miles though. I got about another 90 miles to get to the Kingdom of Tonga, which is a group of islands in front of me. Uh, then it'll take another day to navigate my way through uh, to where the main port is. So still another two days at sea, really. Though it's been getting colder as I've been going along, uh, today got the sunshade up, which is good because it means it's sunny and warm. I finally just made some bread, uh, ready to bake that up for lunch. So all is good on board. But of course, that wasn't to last. Like any other passage that the old sea dog makes, the bad weather paid us a visit. Been a rough old whoa! Oh, don't splash my camera. Been a rough old day today. Wow. All right on cue. That was a rough one. Um, yes, uh, the island of Tonga over there. You can just about see it. Um, the weather's coming down from the left of the picture, uh, and uh, I need. To, I should have been there already. But uh, nasty, nasty weather today. Uh, going down the side, I'm trying to stay as close as I can to the island without getting blown too far out down the weather, which is in that direction. Yeah, um, had a rough old day of it today. Blowing about uh, 25, 30 knots. It was definitely blowing 30 knots this morning anyway. Maybe it's come down a bit now. But yeah, uh, it's blowing me down off my course, so I'm having to fight to stay up there. I was under a bare poles earlier on. Um, I've got a, the foresail up partly uh, at the moment, and, but uh, I had nothing up there and I was doing four knots on the bare poles earlier today. Right on cue, crappy weather. I thought this passage was going to be actually okay. I thought, oh yeah, this is actually not a bad passage this time. And um, yeah, it's um, been a bit taxing. Just, I spent the whole day reading in my bunk because there's only place to be. It's just horrible out here. So I'm going to stay the night out here, not get too close to the island, but close enough. As it started to get dark, I had to judge just how close I could get to the island and be safe, because I had to sleep. As you can see, it actually looks beautiful. But as soon as I stick the camera up over the front of the boat, you can hear the wind. So this is the story this morning. Unfortunately, it's not a good story. Uh, made my way to the northern part of the Kingdom of Tonga. Uh, there's three separate groups of islands. This is the northern group that we're looking at now. And I'm wallowing around up uh, in the northwest end. Uh, but I'm unable to get to them because the wind is blowing out of the southeast. And uh, the main port is on the left-hand side at the top of the main uh, group of islands there and I can't get to it. I've had a rough old night and uh, we've been down this road before. Um, so there's no point of even trying. It's just too strong uh, a wind to get there. It's blowing out on deck and the sea, um, it's rough. It's not hugely rough, but it's uh, rough enough. Yeah, it's just that bit too rough to sail uh, upwind. Plus the fact 
that the uh, island, it's Vavuwu or Vavuwo or something, I don't know how you pronounce it, is pretty much just over there. You might just sort of see it somewhere about there. And it's directly upwind. And I've been, uh, I played this game before uh, in Beckway. It took me three, three days to get to Beckway. I found myself downwind of the island and it's exactly the same here. Uh, so I'm not playing that game. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. I've taken a bash in. Uh, both uh, man and machine are tired. Uh, I've had enough of this. You can only take so much. I had to wedge myself in my bunk last night. Sleep deprivation is actually a form of torture, but for solo sailors, that's just an everyday thing. And sometimes you just got to know when to quit. But then sometimes you just don't want to. And with a change of weather comes a change of fortune. This morning, the mighty Shadmeister has got the bit between her teeth and she's steaming along like a train. And she's doing it by herself. I'm not on the wheel. I'm just chillaxing after uh, an hour and a half of getting all the sails up. One reef in the main. And the two foresails working together, sucking air, close hauled. Feeling a little bit uh, wary that she's all fully loaded at the moment. Not overly keen on straining everything like this. Um, so I'd rather not, but we're trying to get to somewhere. We've got nowhere else to go at the moment. And it's caused me to lose my temper again and swear and cuss. This boat will not steer itself. I, I just, I'm gonna have a stroke with this one. You, I'll, I'll, Shadi, please steer yourself just for a couple of minutes while I do this. 